Okay, let's go in. Here, stare at the ceiling with me. I'm lying here, just resting, taking a breather. Uh, stinking about Warframe. Just recently, before I laid down to take a break, rewatched Asshat Tino's uh, How to Fix Warframe. Um, two of those. The resources and the mandatory mods. I got to thinking on an idea I've been fondling around in my brain hole. I was thinking... Tying a bunch of things together. A good bit of resources from plane not not planes, it's not the planes, it's the fucking mountain range of Eidolon. Rail flak and base game. Um the Kuvalich system. Um, syndicates, um, Salad 5, there's that one line he says, Betrayers, that always tickles me, <laughs> cheeky little fucker, you know, that cheeky little fuck has an interesting, um, mindset and set of priorities as well as a attitude and general disposition <laughs> especially for someone who's named salad I know it's Alad V but I just call him salad five you know a little balsamic vinaigrette and he'll go over just well <laughs> maybe some garlic breadsticks and some pasta <laughs> Anyway, uh, I was thinking all this is going to be separate things that build up together, so just listen to what I've got to say at first. Let it sink in. Think about it. Syndicates. Add a, a level 6 to them where they choose to support you and the don't take away standing with them from you doing other syndicate stuff. And the only way you lose standing with them is to buy something. Also, D, at that sixth rank, uh, make the standing cap disappear entirely. That way we can do what we want to do at our own pace. Yeah, okay, there's there's one dude in the the fucking Plains of Eidolon who tri capped like six times in one night. Yeah, in one hour, just tri capped like six times. Not everyone is anywhere near ready for that. That's one dude who set the time aside to do that. Anyway, after you get to that uh, sixth rank up with them, they give you uh, a quest. You go on this quest, and at the end of it, you get upgrade modules, widgets, or whatever <clears throat> for various on Sundra and the Orbiter. Um, like with parent sequence, an upgrade widget for the mod station so that you can put in X amount of uh, mod cards, scan them, 
can get a permanent blueprint so that you can put in resources and print your own mod cards out. Well, let's see. I'm not sure if just that would be enough, you know, with one faction. I'm still working on it. Still thinking about it. And as far as uh, the bronze level or common mods, I've got a couple of hundred of each of them. So, throw in a hundred unranked of one mod card so that you can get a permanent blueprint and put in um, uh, 10 endo fucking uh, what else well it's always going to be 10 endo per um, per fucking mod card now isn't it and then you know what other um, under 20 of whatever resource common resources because it's it's a common mod so under 20 of X number of X amount of common resources to make a common mod and you know, give it a minute timer for it to finish that. Uh, Twenty endo for uncommons or silver levels, and then jump right up to fifty for the rare or gold ones, and then for uh, platinum colored or primed ones. Well, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be a. I'm not sure about that one just yet. There's gonna have to be a lot of idea tossing around. And as far as you know, scanning a bunch of them to make that permanent blueprint. If it's all unranked mods, a hundred of the commons. You go down to 50 or 25 of the uncommons. And you go down to 10 or 5 of the rares. And what? Fucking two primed ones? The short term effect of this is a lot of people are going to want to go into the trading and use platinum or trade with some other thing. Possibly going to be endo sculptures and other mods to get the, the mods they're after so they can get a blueprint and make their own then they can go off and trade that for platinum and whatever else in conjunction with that DE um, parallel note here get Microsoft to cut the platinum prices in half and double the amount of platinum that people get when they make that purchase and as far as buying resources put out a fucking massive massive one million of every resource in the game basically and try to keep that like at a ten dollar range I'm trying to keep this balanced for in-game trading and everything else, but that's where Microsoft uh, comes in uh, on their end of rebalancing the prices for everything so that, you know, $50 is what's going to get you 
what used to be a two hundred dollars worth of platinum it rebalanced the entire trading economy yes I know it'll do that short term a lot of people are gonna do a lot of buying long term it's gonna even out and people are gonna be thinking you know I can go and buy all these resources and then I can go in and make my own mods and we'll get into amalgams later and ribbons you've got a system where you can go and trade in ribbon slivers to buy ribbons so enhance that system a bit I don't think we need at this time to even talk about manufacturing your own ribbons but like I said uh, some time ago Anna I sent you guys at the DE community a uh, dissertation saying make it to where at mastery rank 20 20 21 or somewhere in there make it to where the riven disposition never drops below a certain mountain each master rank up to 25 it increases disposition across the board for all rivens that way when you get one if you're trading from someone who has it at a disposition of one and you're at master rank fucking 25 your riven disposition and once it comes over to you is gonna be five out of five that way you're getting the power that you've earned by being that mastery rank it makes mastery rank mean something too also you're gonna have to work in a way to tie in making your own mods probably at an incremental level I mean start with the start with the common ones and then we'll go from there you have to tie that into the mastery rank and probably probably later on for uh, probably for the primed ones you'll have to tie that into hard or ultra hard mode now for um, resources to manufacture your own mods having a massive purchasable thing for about ten dollars that'll get you a million of each resource leave that there have seasonal or holiday or or um, uh, warframe birthday um, price discounts on that along with various other things in the platinum market and let's see um, ferrite alloy plates those are pretty common polymer bundles are pretty common so you could throw in like 10 of, 10 of each of those for whatever whatever mod you want to build I'm thinking mix it up a little bit like if you're making something that does uh, what was it those 90 uh, increase 90 percent increase on uh, status procs like you could take a certain resource like um, maybe one or two detonite ampules along with some uh, ferrite 
an alloy plate along with the base of tin endo and that would be a nice uh, starting point for one of those 90% uh, increase to heat damage or you could go over to uh, fill drawn sample and um, what were those uh, fiber optic like looking things I forgot what they're called along with some plastids for uh, electric damage and then a mix of those two uh, resource pools for making one that's specifically for radiation Oh yeah, yeah. I've looked at a bunch of mods and there's a there's a lot that I don't have. So as uh, as I collect more stuff, I'll get to the point where I'll be able to say resolutely and absolutely this this and this to do this this and that. But as far as I can tell right now, you've got mods that are 90% for the four base types. But what about the six combos? Do the 90s for those. Do the 60-60s for those. Do the impact slash and puncture ones. Do those make mods for those go back to basics and as far as the mandatories well you've got salad five doing amalgams so you know make it to where eventually we can do a quest line with him we can make uh, amalgams and do a, a, a serration amalgam with the the impact slash puncture and the 60-60s and the 90s to get uh, all the different stuff on it. That way we don't have to use serration all the time. We can use an amalgam of that plus the other things. Amalgams have a lot of potential. And don't just make it specific to, you know, a, a weapon class. Just make it a primary. We can slap on anything. And the, the 6060s, the stat element ones, y you don't have any of that for critical. You don't have any of that for impact slash and puncture as far as I can tell. And I've got quite a bit of more mods to go. Oh yeah, here's another thing. Completely side note. Just thought I'd throw it in because why the fuck not. I did nearly 20 runs of the Rape Lolly to get uh, parts for Wisp. I managed to get a minimum of two of every one of the amalgams that dropped for that fight and I got like 10 blueprints for wisp and there was one part I needed and it never dropped uh, a while back I said something about a dynamic uh, loot table distribution curve where you know it starts at this nice little curve you get everything neat and organized in it and then that curve shifts to favor something else in the loot pool dynamic loot drop chances instead of this RNG shit it's a shit show it really is DE so here I am extending the olive branch giving you ideas 
take them, run with them. For those of you who don't understand completely what I'm talking about, give it time, do your own research, and then compare your research to what I'm saying. Compare your research to other people's research. Don't do opinions. <clears throat> Never do opinions. Get a more holistic understanding. And when I say research, play the game, change things up, see what's different with what and what's the same with what. Hey, there's one more thing I wanted to say. Fuck me for forgetting. Oh, something really cool. When I first got a, um, what the fuck was it? It was that auto fire, uh, high magazine, high fire rate, what was it, the Gorgon? The one that the... A heavily armored female grenier unit carries around. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the Gorgon. I treated that as a, a potential critical build. Then I got a Prisma Gorgon. That was a legitimate critical build. Then I got a Gorgon Wraith. That was a status build. DE, that blew my mind with how awesomely diverse that weapon's variations were. Also, the the Wraith, Prisma, um, and Prime variations of things, because they take a bit to earn, they should be at least double the power of the regular version. Like, um, take that Gorgon for example. The Prisma was a, a bit more powerful, not much, but it had better crit. And the Gorgon Wraith had better status. So, uh, the Gorgon Prisma and Gorgon Wraith should have had double the damage and double the magazine. I'm not sure about double the fire rate, though, of the regular one. They should have been something that I wanted to keep using as opposed to say, oh, this is cool. It'll make me want to get another ribbon for it. Because I've, I've got a ribbon for a Gorgon, and that's a critical ribbon. So now I want to get a status one. So, that's going to drive me to farm the, the Requiem Relics, which need to drop about double the frequency that they're currently dropping. That and the uh, recycling of them, instead of combining four to get one, combine four to get two, or combine two to get one. Balance it out at a 50%. Now... I'm leaving a lot of things unsaid as far as uh, which resources to throw together to make which mod. But I gave a couple of basic ideas because, hey, I'm not part of DE, so I'm not getting paid to expand on these ideas further. 
Unless D's paying you, my advice, don't expand on the idea further. Just let them know you like the idea to begin with. If you want to throw in your own idea, keep in mind, my ideas come from the source idea of everyone's pursuit of happiness and how to accomplish that. If you don't center your idea around that, then don't give any feedback to me because I don't want to hear opinions. Everyone's pursuit of happiness is not your own or my own. So that being said, fuck off till next time.